the Japanese rising sun flag, and I'll call it the rising sun, which is what it alludes to. So this is, if you picture the, the Japanese national flag, as they have today, but with uh, 16 red and white rays uh, and the, um, the, the sun just off to the left towards the hoist. Uh, and this is the flag that we're specifically talking about. So that's the Japanese rising sun. But it was first used, though, we need to go back uh, to the 1600s, which is when it, it first originated from. But the first version was uh, with the sun centred, exactly like the, the main Japanese national flag. And that version with the, the sun rays was adopted by the uh, the Imperial Japanese Army. But that's not the one we're talking about. The one we're talking about, as I say, is the one to the left, which appeared first in 1889 properly and was adopted by the naval uh, the Navy uh, signs of the Imperial Japanese Navy. And um, both flags were in use uh, for the, both the Japanese Army and the Navy um, for quite some time, obviously right up until the end of the Second World War in 45, um, when both flags were retired and stopped. Now, in 1954, the newly named, and I love these, the, the Japanese Maritime Self-Defence Force, the Navy, basically reintroduced uh, their, their original flag but in completely different because they uh, changed the shade of red ever so slightly. Um, and that was their get out clause. Of, it wasn't the same original flag. The army, however, didn't reuse, uh, well, which was the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force Army. They used a completely different flag to what they originally had. So, yeah, it's this off-center version that we're talking about. And the reason it's linked to what, what's uh, it, it's been branded with, especially in um, the Asian world, uh, is because of the, the, the wartime atrocities that um, countries such as Korea, China, the Philippines, and a lot of other Asian countries um, experienced under the hands of Japan under that original naval flag. And that's hence why the connotations even today um, is a big push in that part of the world. But what I found interesting with this flag, which makes it slightly different to the others that we've talked about so far, is that there seems to be this gap, unless history has, has wiped it a lot, where there's not much pushback on this Japanese flag until it really kicks off in 2012. So really recent when uh, a group in New York, a group of Koreans in New York, under the, uh, the banner of the Citizens Against War Crimes symbols, started really pushing that the, uh, the Japanese rising sun flag um, should be banned because of what it was linked to and, and how uh, their country in the past was was dealt with um, during the wars and previously. They had a banner that appeared again in 2013 as part of an East Asian Cup, which promoted the issue even more. So then it started to really get a, a lot more traction at this point that, yes, this is a flag that shouldn't really be widely used. And there was a professor, uh, Koichi Nakoni, of the Sophia University in Tokyo, who suggested that the rising sun flag at this time is it was more comparable to uh, the Confederacy flag or banner when trying to put it into context of what this flag had meaning to a lot of the Asian world outside Japan. It was eventually banned by FIFA, the uh, International Football Association, in 2017 after it appeared, apparently, um, at that time. And then 2018, this was an interesting read that I found. So in 2018, there was a, a big, I don't know what you want to call it, it was almost like the, the local countries around, well, anybody who had a, an international um, navy basically goes and shows off all their fleet. Um, but in 2018, it happened to be in South Korea where they um, had this big thing. But uh, the interesting point was that South Korea had never objected to Japan flying this flag when they had this big show your boats off type of thing. One being in 1998 and then again in 2008, it was the Japanese Navy were flying their, their rising sun flag, no issues at all. But come 2018, that's when South Korea really picks off about this. Um, and with their aim specifically at Japan not to fly this rising sun flag, and because they were hosting this uh, international fleet review, dictated that uh, any any country that was um, joining into this, uh, this review had to fly their national flags on their navies, not the, the navy flags, of which a lot of countries agreed and went no problem at all except Japan, the one country it was really aimed at, who insisted that, no, their rising sun flag was their naval flag and their their navy ships will only ever fly that flag. And therefore, they actually pulled out of the exercise in the end. And then in 2020, there was a big hoo-ha about the, the, um, the flag appearing in the Tokyo Olympics, which, of course, as we know, took part in 2021 uh, because of the pandemic. And the reason for the pandemic obviously had 
no audience, just the participants, that's all. So South Korea took that as a win that after putting their complaint to the uh, IOC, the um, International Olympics Committee, saying you should ban this rising sun flag at the Olympics, of which the IOC were going, well, we'll take each case by case. But because at the end of uh, Tokyo 2020, the rising sun flag never appeared, probably because nobody was sitting in the audience, this wasn't designed specifically for the reason of what it's known for today. This was designed almost a couple hundred years ago, purely as a Navy flag. It's just that its connotations today is, is very different to what it was. Japan's perspective, the flag itself, as I said, it's very much steeped in its own naval history. Uh, and I suppose the question would be, should Japan drop the rising sun flag because of its associations or because they've got all this history that sits behind it of their, their Navy? Should they continue which I'm thinking they're going to anyway, because they would have dropped it by now if they were going to keep it as it is. So I, I think this is, it's a different connotation, although the underlying how different nations were treated under this flag, just like they were with other flags that we've already talked about. But it's just interesting that it's, the flag was there for a very different reason, which um, for me is the, the interesting point on this one. Some of the war crimes they committed. So if I was to have an opinion on the Navy using the flag or not, I think out of respect to the rest of the world and the countries in particular that were affected, China, South Korea, um, the Philippines, and a lot of those, you know, Southeast Asia countries during the war, like the atrocities they committed were, they were bad. And I think it's almost a smack in the face to those countries that their Navy of all places to fly, you know, that was part of the war. Like, why do they get away with using it? When clearly there's a country, they dropped it and they stick with just the current, you know, Japanese flag. It has come up, if you look at that, the design of that, which is, it's it's not a good design. It's got Japanese connotations behind it with the rising sun. It's still there, but it is, it's very different. And there's, I, I must admit, when I was looking into this, I was thinking that there's no reason why the Navy couldn't do exactly what it did previously and take the same design as the Army shift the circle to the to the left slightly towards the hoist and hey presto you, you've got this union flag with the the ground force as well as you as the navy and you've dropped the whole connotation of what your previous flag was all about um so you can go and join and show off all your big boats with the other local neighbors yeah. um whatever floats your boat and that was a pun intended Wh why that's not a thing i i don't know because you know if the army can drop it why couldn't the navy